Um, you did good. You did good. Uh, I want to just share a single scripture with you um, on giving. The uh, it's one of my one of my favorite giving scriptures, but it's one that's talked about so often. I don't use it all that often because so many other people use it as a basis for their exhortation to, to give. It's Luke 6, 38. Um, and we all know it pretty well. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. And I just was reading that this morning, thinking that if I don't know, the President of the United States walked in here, or uh, some famous movie star walked in here, or somebody that, that had a, a persona that had a lot of gravity to it, and said, you need to do something. You need to do this thing, or you need to do that thing. We would be very much more likely to not sit back and say, well, I don't have to because it would be a person that we admired or respected or were submitted to, and, and, and it would have an impact on us. And this still doesn't mean that we would necessarily have to do it, but we would be more likely to, to do it if somebody of stature basically said, you need to do this. And Luke 6.38 is, in my Bible, is in red, which means that it's a direct quotation from the Lord Jesus Christ, and that would be my Lord Jesus Christ, and I hope yours as well. And he says, give. We could stop right there. We really don't need to read the rest of the verse. He just said, give. So it's like Jesus just saw the new sign, said, I like that sign, I like this church, and came in the door and stood up here and said, give. What would our response be? Uh, well, nah, I don't want to. No, if Jesus said give, we figure out a way to give. Well, guess what? Jesus said give. No, he didn't stop there. Now, the word give there is a, it, there's only one word in the Greek, really, that's translated as give. And it, and it means, strangely enough, to give. It, there's no, like, weird thing. It just means to give. It's a simple act of giving. And it, it requires no explanation. It requires no expanse uh, of explanation. But then he, Jesus is so kind, he goes on and he says, and, in other words, give, and something will happen. Give sets in motion something. When you give, it sets in motion something that causes what you give to come back to you. He says, give and it. It meaning what you give. So right there, that tells me if I don't give, I don't set anything in motion. Now, I have to admit, and I'll, I'll the Bible says confess your sins one to another. I'll go first. You guys can be next. There's a lot of time that I'm waiting for the good measure to come back. And the Holy Spirit will come to me and say, um, it's not a one-way street. It's a two-way street. And you have to give first. And then it comes back. If there's no it, it can't come back. I don't like that, but that is what the word says. Give and it, that which you give, will come back to you. And it will come back to you in a different form, a different amount than what you give. You set in motion something, and it comes back, good measure. That, if you do a word study on that, it simply means a good measure. It means the word good which means the opposite of bad, it will come back in a good measure. So it won't be like a, a half-baked measure. It'll be a full-baked measure. It'll be a complete measure. It'll be good. 
Everybody say good. Good. All right. Then it comes pressed down. Now that, I looked that up too, and it means pressed. And it means pressed down. Again, just a, just a, isn't that amazing how these, when you do these word studies, it just a, reveals the scripture to you? So it comes in a good measure. It comes pressed down, and then it says it comes shaken together. And, and how many times have you ever tried to put coffee in a, in a, in a can or something, and, and it just is too much, and so you shake it, and when you shake it, all the little particles get closer and closer together so you can get more in. And then I looked up this, shake it together, and it means to move side to side rapidly, i.e. shake. So this is really cool. Jesus is not mincing his words here. He's saying, give and give, and it will come back to you, and it'll be a good measure, not a bad measure, and it'll be pressed down so that we can get as much in there as possible, and it will be shaken together so that every little empty space in that measure will be used up by the it. And then he says, but it's not limited to that. He says, it'll be running over. And again, I looked that up, and it means to overflow, to run over. So he says, not only will that measure come back to you, and it'll be pressed down, shaken together, it'll be good, but it won't stop there. It will actually overflow. It'll, it'll fall out. And then it says, shall men give unto your bosom. Now, I think that's really cool. Jesus is saying, I'm going to cause your fellow brethren, I'm, I'm going to cause the world to give to you. And they may not know it, they may not be aware of it, but they're going to give you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Now, this next phrase says, for with the same measure that you meet or you give, it shall be measured to you again. And I got thinking, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. That sort of undoes the running over part. Because, because if I give a pint, that's my measure. And then that means the Lord's going to give me a pint. Now, it'll be a good pint. It'll be a shaken down pint. pint. It'll be pressed in place. It might even be running over. But it's still just going to be a pint. But then I just saw this for the first time today. It doesn't say, shall someone. It says, shall men i.e. the plural. So I give a pint, and there's going to be multiple pints that are going to come back to me because the measure that I give is the measure that will come back. So the spiritual dimension is probably not Lori, but, but if I give a pint, Lori's somewhere along the line going to give a pint to me. And then Savannah's going to give a pint to me. And then Pastor Carl's going to give a pint to me. So my one pint created a demand for, for more pints than what I gave. Yeah. Multiple pints. Yes. Now, go back up to that first word, give. It's, it's, a, it's a specific tense. It means the uh, what we call, if you remember back to your sixth grade grammar, it's the imperative. Y'all remember the imperative? There's the declarative, the interrogatory, and the, the, what? I'm sorry, I forgot the word. Declarative. Declarative. And the imperative is a command. The understood you for the subject. Remember that? That the word give is a complete sentence. And the assumed subject of that is you. You give. Right? Now, the imperative in the Greek is a command, but it's very unique. It's a command to do something and to continue to do it. It's not a it's not a what we call punctiliar, where it happens once and then it's done. What what the word means is give and keep on giving. It's a command not just to give one time but to develop a lifestyle of giving. And when we develop that lifestyle of giving, that's the it. 
that comes back to us. This is really powerful stuff. I think it is anyway. So look, just put the uh, amplified version up there. I think that does a really good job about this. And I don't have it in front of me, so I'm hoping that they can just sort of magically throw it up there. There. Give, and gifts will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Now, you notice that's the same as the King James, because you can't improve on that. <laughs> will they pour into the pouch formed by the bosom of your robe, which is used as a bag? So think of an overcoat or a, a raincoat or something, and you gather it up and you hold it in front of you, bosom high, and that's where all those gifts come and it fills that bag and it runs over from that bag for with the measure you deal out, with the measure you use when you confer benefits on and then we ran out of space on the slide, will it be given back to you? So this morning, I want to encourage you that if you have a lifestyle of giving, to continue that this morning. But you know what? If you don't have a lifestyle of giving, today's a good day to start it. No condemnation for not having done it in the past. No weight of sin on you for not having created that lifestyle, for not having heard the Word of God and been obedient to it. It's all fresh. We're a new creation every single day. And today, you can start a lifestyle of giving. Amen? Amen? Amen. Thank you. Um, if you're making out a check, make it out to store on. Uh, and don't forget that we do have the uh, PayPal option where you can give online. I've used that several times, and it's really very convenient. Um, we're doing alms today. Regular, regular alms. Regular. Why is it almost always in the middle? It's just easier for just people to dunk. Dunk. Slam dunk. Slam dunk. Okay. Let's all stand. We're going to pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that the word is fresh and new in season and out of season, that it comes to bring life. And that, Father, that if there be any condemnation in anything that I've said this morning, we just, we just remove that right now. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. That we are set free and we are made whole. That we are free to give. Father, I thank you that the word is quick. That it's a seed that's sown in the heart. And that the hearts of the people in this room today are good ground. And they're going to bring forth the fruit of your word. Father, we thank you for those that have a lifestyle of giving. And Father, we thank you for those that are beginning a lifestyle of giving today. And we ask that you bless the former and the latter in Jesus' name. And everyone said, 